Okay, start lah. Start already. Today, January 29, 2016. This is a Be Kind to Pets Veteran Educational video discussing about a rare case of Mala abscess in the cat. Mala refers to the premolar tooth, the upper one, which had been uh, uh, infected. Now you can see in this drawing, you just see this drawing first, although it's a dog, but it's the same, same, same problem. The, kind of, the premolar tooth uh, in the cat, the root there, the root here is infected. So the bacteria travels through upwards to the skin because they are quite close to each other. So from the root to the skin is only a few millimeters, so it travels up and forms a hole. This hole is called a fistula. Fistula is the passageway between one mucous membrane from the gums to, to the external. So it's like a drain, uh, so it's called fistula. So there's another name for it, it's called oronasal fistula. Oronasal, no, oro is mouth, nasal is the nose. So oronasal fistula, there's a proper word for it. So this drawing will show that how the mala abscess is, uh, is formed. Before the fistula shows, there will, be, there will be a mala abscess because it has not ruptured yet. Now this cat, you can see here, this cat was two days ago, we, have, we had a big mala abscess here and there was a hole here, a fistula here, which, which would never heal. Right? It would never heal because of the bacteria keep on attacking the, the nasal passages, the nasal sinus here. So now you can see that two days after after I've done the extraction of the of the rotten premolar tool, the hole is closing by itself. You can see that, and of course, the cat is uh, is uh, feeling better and it's not so swollen. Now, mala abscess is in a cat is very rare compared to the dogs. Now, this this swelling was much bigger, about two times bigger. You can see the other video and uh, it was very painful. So now, after the extraction of the, of the premolar tooth, or molar tooth we call it, in the cat or dog, or the kinase tooth, which is the upper premolar tooth of the upper jaw, they have two, one this side, one this side. So in, in some cases, the dog or the cat get both, both swelling, but in this case, this part is not swollen, you see, it's not swollen. So this one, the teeth is okay. The teeth is okay. Okay, so, so now the, the cat doesn't allow me to, to touch him, okay. But anyway, you just show the, the, the two days ago, uh, you just show here, I, I have the photos, images there to, to, to no, just cut, cut show the cat, the, the heel one, huh? no, the heel one, okay, just show the heel. Understandably, it's quite painful. So we have been given medication, so he's quite fed up, but uh, you need to give antibiotics for several days. And you can see how, how thin it is. Huh? I see how thin, because the, the owner had not uh, sent for treatment, you can see that you can feel the bones. Now, this case, we did take a blood test, and a very interesting finding is that, uh, show me. the blood test shows that uh, the blood test before the operation sh shows that uh, you don't need the light actually. It shows that uh, my intern not very good. Right? Okay. Anyway, the blood test shows that total white cell count is high. Neutrophils are high. So is and platelets are low. So this cat had septicemia. Septicemia because of these three factors: bacteremia and septicemia. So that was why it's so thin because uh, the, the, the blood is full of bacteria and toxins. Now, uh, there's another interesting finding that is the, the cat has high eosinophils, 6%. Uh, normally, they, they have less than that, uh, maybe 1% or so. So, there's a condition in cats called eosinophilia, uh, eosinophilic granuloma complex, where the they form ulcers, ulcers inside the mouth. That's one of the conditions, and there's a lot of eosinophils inside the 
the bloodstream. So this is cat has two molar abscess and uh, the eosinophilic renal remark com uh, complex. So it's, it's a, a more rare case than just molar abscess alone. Uh. Okay, finish. Thanks.